Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning, I'm Jeff Kellum, the Parish Associate at Union Presbyterian Church in Endicott. Welcome to this week's edition of Encounter. When I grew up in this area back in whenever it was, don't need to go into that, there were uh, weekly band concerts during the summers at the old Enjoy Park in Endicott. The EJ band would play one week, the IBM band would play another. My Aunt Viv and Uncle Tom would sing with the EJ band on occasion when they came up to, uh, to visit their hometown. It was a wonderful memory. And a few years ago, when we moved to this area, we found ourselves in Arnold Park watching the Vestal Community Band, and I thought, man, this has taken me back. Well, our guest today is Jerry Natoli, who for 25 years right. has been the conductor and the uh, music director of the Vestal Community Band. Yes, sir. So we'll talk a little bit about the band and about the New York town band traditions, and then we'll talk a little bit about some cabarets that are taking place at local churches. Let's start with your, your coming to the area and, and uh, how did you get involved with the Vestal Community Air Band? Try again later. Oh, crap. <laughs> my, uh, my watch, I took my phone off, didn't I? <laughs> but my watch is still here <laughs> and talking. Okay. I, I came to the area uh, in um, 1985 uh, to take a job as the Union Endicott High School Band Director. Yeah. And that's, that's what we did at first. And when I moved down here, I was also... Uh, playing, already playing, in the Binghamton Symphony and in the Tri-Cities Opera Orchestra. And so that's where my first experience with, with um, music in, in the Southern Tier was. Yeah. And then um, with the community band experience, um, I knew about the IBM band. And that was the, f the first thing. I knew that was there. I was teaching school. They were playing concerts Tuesday at noon. I never heard them until their very last concert, as a matter right. of fact. And, uh, but... Um, um, Aubrey Beyer was the high school band director in Vestal for a number of years. He had retired, and he had started the Vestal Community Band. I understand. I, I'm not even sure I wasn't here for the founding, but I guess it started in his kitchen for a um, um, class reunion. Yeah. And a bunch of the kids from the class reunion were coming back. It was two or three years of, of kids at once, <clears throat> and they went to him and said, Mr. Beyer, if we got the band together, would you be willing to conduct it? So he did. And they liked it so much, they said, could we keep it going? Right. And he agreed to continue to work with them and to have this band. So um, about five years into his tenure with the band, um, right in that same time, I left teaching and went out to start my own business. And um, so I was still playing professionally, but I wasn't teaching school. You, you were playing what? Uh, bass trombone. Okay. <clears throat> I played bass trombone in all those groups and all through college. And so anyway, he... he um, he called me, he said, I, I know you were a high school band director, I know the Union Endicott High School Band, I know how good they were, I've watched your career since you were a kid in high school. I was, I was telling you before the show started even that he was a judge, a New York State judge, that actually judged me when I was trying to go to Allstate and <laughs> audition for places. And so uh, he called and said, I would like to be able to go visit grandchildren, I'd like to take a week off. We play every Thursday all year long. And so I would love to be able to take some time off and get somebody as an assistant conductor, uh, uh, someone to replace me from time to time and work with the group. And um, I wasn't remotely interested. I was already playing in the other two groups. Um, my brain went directly to that one Andy Griffith show episode when they started the town band in Mayberry. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's what I knew it would sound like. <laughs> right. I, I just you know, didn't want to get make a commitment for something that I knew I wouldn't enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. But I loved Aubrey. And he was a wonderful man, and he was a wonderful band director. And he had a lot to do with my own career and my own progress. So I, um, I agreed to go to one summer. He wanted to go to Arizona to visit family. So it would be there for like two Thursdays in a row, go to a rehearsal, do a concert, and it would be over. And for him, that was an easy, yeah. easy yes. And I went to the first rehearsal. I didn't recognize a single musician playing in the Southern Tier with all these musicians, I'm sure I would have recognized someone. I didn't. There was yeah. no one there I knew. <laughs> and so I knew again that it wasn't going to be very good. Yeah, right. And then he played the first song, and I almost fell off the seat. 
It was lovely and it was beautiful. And there were people really contributing and they were, and, and they were listening to him. And it wasn't um, a, just a group of people that brought some instruments to make noise. Yeah. They cared about it. And when he tried to correct something, they listened and they paid attention. And uh, at that point in time, I think my first thought was, you know, I wonder if there's a way I can somehow stay more involved. I know I've only promised two weeks, but right. I have more time in the summer. I can do stuff. And then as it, as it grew and, and um, then he got sick. And when he got ready to pass away, he said, um, he asked me, he said, the band likes your conducting. I would hate to think that this band will fold because I passed away. Right. I don't want the band to end simply because I couldn't stay. And um, the promise I made to him was, I'll, I'll stay with it, don't worry, rest easily, I'll stay with it for a few months, as long as it takes, and we'll get a good conductor, and they'll take it from there. And that was 25 years ago. I've yeah, you've been there ever since. Fallen into the family, I don't, yeah. don't want to leave. Well, and it is kind of a family. <clears throat> uh, the, the, the musicians are, are, are they, they range from some teacher, music teachers, I suppose, but mm -hmm. other folks who picked up their trumpet or their trombone or their tuba back in junior high school, and, and they've continued right. to, to play. And this discipline of meeting every Thursday night yeah. to prepare for these concerts uh, through the summer, mm -hmm. uh, a tremendous commitment. That, that was a stroke of genius on Aubrey's part. Originally, I believe they decided to meet the first Thursday of every month. And between the first Thursday of February and the first Thursday of March, you can make a lot of commitments and suddenly you're canceling. Yeah. You don't Weather. get to that one. Yeah. And then you don't get to the one in April. And then this little band, it was a very small group when it started, wasn't able to be a band. And so instead of what all the rest of us would do, any of us would say, gee, it was a nice run. It was a lot of fun. It's not working. Maybe yeah. in five years we'll do it again at another reunion. He said, why don't we do it weekly? Yeah. If we do it weekly, it'll be more like a bowling night, and you'll lock <laughs> it in, and you'll come to right. me instead of to, you know, to the bowling alley, right. and that's that's how it's happened. And and we do play all year, by the way. We play yeah. the twelve concerts in the summer, and then we'll play another twelve concerts during the year, probably one a month. Uh, we play at local nursing homes. I'll bring a seventy-piece band into um, Elizabeth Church Manor, and they'll bring down twenty-five people. Yeah. And many times I'll get even apologies for that, where they'll say, um, "Gee, we only had twenty-five people." Well, we'd have been at the Vestal High School with no audience, so yeah, this is great. Right, we don't right, mind. Right. We're happy to do it. So uh, what, what's the age group of the people playing? Do we you, have, you know? um, uh, I can think, probably the youngest person in the band right now is 17 years old, and we've had, we've had people, I think we have one approaching 90. We have had people oh. at 92 and 96 years old. Oh, my gosh. And then um, we have sort of a, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. It, it sounds funny, but it's the truth. Um, once you're in... Yeah. You can't leave. And we, don't, and we keep you on the mailing list. And um, uh, the people who have passed away since I've been there have been the stories where you say, gee, he was here at Thursday's rehearsal. He went home Friday, and then he passed away on Saturday. He's 92 years old. And um, it's one of our gentlemen, I won't name names, but came up to me just recently and said, you know, I've played all my life. I'm approaching 90. Uh, it's hard for me to get in and, and get up here and get to all the rehearsals, and <clears throat> I have my own issues at home. I have things, and um, so unfortunately, it's been fabulous, and I've loved being part of this, but I, I'm not going to, after the, after the Christmas concert, I'm not going to be back anymore. Yeah. And, um, and I said to him very straight, I looked at him and said, um, geez, I don't think we have a mechanism for you to leave. I don't think there's a way... <laughs> We don't, that's not part of the program. I don't know how to do <laughs> that. Right. I, you can miss the next several rehearsals while you're figuring out, you know, how to get back. Right, but right. no, you can't leave. It's yeah. just not done. People play in this band until they pass away. That's how we do it. That's, <laughs> that's the way it is. Right, and right. and uh, so he's coming less, but yeah, we're, yeah. you know, we're not eliminating him. It's just not done. It yeah. isn't how we work. So the repertoire of a community band is pretty broad. I mean, you've mm -hmm. got your standard marches. Uh, you have some symphonic right. stuff. You have some Broadway stuff. Right. What's the f what do people really want to hear? You get a sense That's, of that. I think, key to the community band versus a lot of other places. And, and I'll take that to, um, I've learned that from David Agard more than anyone else in this area. David, there's a lot of discussion. You can talk to all kinds of professional musicians who would talk to you about maybe he wasn't the best conductor. I don't know. I, yeah. I can't tell. I'm not a great conductor myself, but who's, who's, who was a great conductor, a great rehearsal, or he was mean in rehearsal, or he was too nice to the band and didn't get it as well. He was a genius at programming. 
Uh -huh. He played the music that people want to hear. Yeah. He didn't shove music down your throats. Yeah. He played White Christmas every Christmas. <laughs> and he didn't try and replace it with some aleatoric something or right, other that, right. that you should get to know because you need to know that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to know that. You yeah. need White Christmas. Now, he was the conductor of the Binghamton, the, the, the BC, BC Pops. Pops. BC right. Pops. Yep. And uh, even billed it as the BC Pops, the fun one. Right. And, um, and I've taken that page from his book. Um, I want to play stuff that you know, and if you don't necessarily know it, I need to know when I hear the music that you're going to like it. Yeah. And Aubrey had four kinds. He had marches. He had show tunes. He had contemporary band literature. We don't play contemporary band literature that requires a, a bachelor's in music to understand, but there's some very pretty contemporary band music. And then he had a thing that he called, and I still see it on a lot of his stuff, filler. Mm. <laughs> and the filler were the Spanish tunes and the, the, the finiculi, finicula, Italian yeah, number yeah. and that stuff because you got to put something in between the big tunes. It's wrestling. And, and then a, a building a program that speaks to the children in the audience. You've done some Disney stuff too. Right. Or some, some movie music that they would know, uh -huh. uh, uh, the sound of music or whatever. Because we, we do have to remember that these kids are growing up with a different kind of music than the rest yeah. of us did. I, I have been in... I've had the opportunity to uh, apply for and been considered for positions in, in really high-level places to conduct. And, and the criticism that I hear that comes back to me, places, things that I've not received, not gotten the opportunity to do, and I've heard some, from, uh, and, I, and I take it with me now and I hold it as part of it, is, is what someone said he's a wonderful conductor and people just really like him, but he has a very immature musical palate. <laughs> <laughs> I take that to heart now, and, yeah, I, and I'm very proud of it. I wear it with a badge of honor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the timeless Disney pieces. Yeah. I love the music from The Lion King. And when you play those pieces, those guys with their noses up in the air all go, yeah, but it was Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. I say, yeah, it was Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> right. You know, and that, that's kind of... And that's what David would do, and, yeah. and, I, and yeah. I think that's important. So we do. We do uh, in the summer. I try to run theme concerts. Yeah. At least one is for the kids. And then one of them last year was a, pardon the expression, reproduction of an IBM band concert. Right. You used some of that repertoire. Well, that that's another story. Um, and stop me if I get too long here, but uh, let me just remind folks that we're talking with Jerry Natoli, who is the. Uh, music director and the conductor for the Vestal Community Band and has been for 25 years and for the next 25 years probably. I hope. <laughs> we have no way of graduating. You yet. can't leave. Yeah. <laughs> so at least I don't have to blow into the instrument. I just stand up in front and... Wave your arms. They yeah. play so well. You, I've told them before, you can use a starter's pistol and a checkered flag with this band and <laughs> you don't have to work very hard at all. <clears throat> but um, to the music, and we have inherited, we have this gigantic library um, and I will say not even close to the size of the main community band library, which may be the biggest library in the United States, but, but, uh, and we do share with them. So when yeah. I see a piece that someone wants to do that I can't buy or is out of print, they probably have it. Yeah. But I told you I went to the one-time concert with the IBM concert band, right. and I went to their very last concert because I'd heard about them. I heard it was such a fabulous institution, and then people were saying, this is it. They're closing the doors. They're ending this group. And I said, oh, well, that's a shame. So I took the time off in school in the end. During it was like my lunch break and took another, arranged for some more time and walked up to IBM for that final concert. Uh, Steve Stafford is a local musician uh, who was conducting at the time. And I listened to the concert. It was terribly enjoyable. And after the concert, I went up, shook his hand. I said, I'm so sorry for this. That's a shame. And, and I was watching on this platform where they played their concerts. There were a whole bunch of large instruments, some tubas, baritone saxes, bass clarinets and stuff. And I said, uh, now what, what are those? They yeah. were kind of left there. And he goes, well, those are the large instruments that belong to IBM. But many of our members have grandchildren, nieces and nephews are in high school band. So we're going to give that to them and they can give a tuba, which would be a five, six, seven thousand dollar purchase. Yeah. We'll be able to give it to a kid who needs the instrument. And then I looked over there and I said to Steve, what's what's all that there's these boxes 40 boxes of music he said that's our library and i said what's that going to do he said they're just taking that away they're going to incinerate it i said oh no 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 <laughs> i'll be right back yeah. and i went and got my van and i came back and we filled the van wow. twice yep. and we have that library yep. and since then um vestal junior high cleaned out their files and we picked up all that music just this year the um, binghamton uh, german band folded yeah. and they have thousands of dollars worth of German band music that we may never play but should not be destroyed. Sure. So we inherited it. 
Bernie Schifrin's band in Binghamton. We have some of that music. And the Windsor Town Band just gave up its entire library to us. Yeah. So we haven't had a chance to sort it all. But This is kind of uh, just... Just spend maybe a minute talking about the town band thing. I mean, is this <clears throat> unique to New York State, or is it just no. that it's still prominent? In it's, it's all over the country, usually in smaller towns. Uh, but even the big cities have what they'll call their, the, you know, the, the wind band that they'll have where people can play. But those are still usually more professional. They'll pay those guys. Yeah. But, but for, for us, and it's kind of been a mission for the Vestal Community Band and for me, is this idea that these are the, not the professional musicians. These are the guys... That, that played in high school, played trumpet in high school, loved it, and became...